from the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. The first headline that I'm going to give you today absolutely shocked me and whoa, it shocked Jack beyond measure. Christian colleges and universities drop ban on alcohol and tobacco. I never thought that I would ever see that in my lifetime. And then Florida bar mixes Bibles and booze. Also, this is quite a statement, alcohol, the beloved enemy. I wonder if that's true. We'll take a look at it in just a moment. But if I could give a title to the program you're going to see right now, it would be A New Walk in This Life in a New Year. Isn't it wonderful to know that we can have a different kind of walk than we've been having simply by asking the Lord to help us? We're going to be talking so much about this in just a moment. But before we look ahead, I want to look back and uh, talk about Jack. Now, he was reared in a, a Belgian American home, and he used to accompany his father and mother to the bar because his father was an entertainer. Nightclubs. A nightclub entertainer, and he would accompany him, and there you see him right there. Hey, Jack, you are one handsome little Five boy. years old. Ah, look how he's smiling. He had a lot of fun there. He was quite an accordion player. And then this is the cafe where his father was an entertainer, the Cajou Cafe in Detroit, 50 years and counting. Well, he looked like a happy little boy there, didn't he? But it wasn't so happy because his father became an alcoholic. How sad. He grew up in an alcoholic home. And you know, Jack, you have so much on your heart that we will address today but you have experienced the result of what alcohol can do. Oh, Rexella, alcohol is not a beloved enemy. Booze destroys, booze brings misery, booze brings heartache. I saw my father come home drunk for 10 years. And because we were a Belgian family, he allowed me to drink at the table and twice in the nightclubs from his own glass. And before I was 10 years of age, on two occasions, I was intoxicated, drunk. But something wonderful happened. A man started praying and witnessing my father. And after 90 days of being with him, just pestering him, Dad came through and received Christ. And 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That's what it used to be. Now in these schools, calling themselves Christian academies and Christian colleges, and in our churches, there's too much of this booze. And I don't see this new life coming out of these people. We're raised a newness of life, Romans 6, 4. God, give us an old Holy Ghost revival in this country that'll change these church members, even professors in colleges. During the Welsh revival, so many came to Jesus that they closed all the saloons and even had to let some of the police force go because God had taken over that city. We need that again, an old-fashioned Holy Ghost-empowered revival that'll take the booze out of the Christians, the tobacco, and clean them up for Jesus' sake. Now, what's the problem? We're not willing to give over our lives to Christ fully. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Hey, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, like Moody said, about face for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's right when a ship is in the water, but wrong when the water's in the ship. It's right for a Christian to be in the world as a witness, but wrong when the world's in the Christian and ruining his testimony. 
ruining his testimony. That's quite a statement, isn't it? But, you know, some things are really happening today. In fact, there's a huge change in many of the colleges and universities, evangelical schools. And this first one I'd like you to take a look at astounded me. It broke my heart. It had to do with the Grand Rapids Press, and I, I'm reading from that right now. Cornerstone University lifted the 68-year ban on faculty and staff alcohol use that stood since the institution was founded 68 years ago. President Joe Stoll told Cornerstone's 279 employees at a staff meeting that alcohol abstinence, a component of a lifestyle statement that had to be signed every year, is being dropped because a three-year internal Bible study, that's a Bible study, concluded it is biblically indefensible. Baloney! Other evangelical Christian colleges that have lifted bans on employees' use of alcohol in recent years include, this astounded me, Bethel University, Northwestern College in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Trinity International and Wheaton College in Illinois, and Biola University in California. Now this next one. Moody Bible Institute drops alcohol and tobacco ban for employees. Oh my word. Wheaton and Huntington also, and Asbury also dropped the ban. Take a look. So you want to go to winemaking school? Now I want to back up here, friends, because I want to ask Jack something that was a statement here by President Joe Stoll. He said, after much Bible study, a three-year internal study, it was concluded that a banning alcohol is biblically indefensible. Now, I think he's saying you can't really find that in the Bible, Jack. How about it? Joel, I preached for your father on many occasions. What a man of God he was. He introduced me to New Jersey, Hackensack, and the crowds were tremendous as he led this great endeavor of many churches together. And everywhere I went in all these years, uh, 800 church crusades and 220 mass crusades, I saw thousands and tens of thousands come to Jesus. But I saw the Lord fill the altars with people saying, I don't want liquor anymore. I'm through with my tobacco. I'm through with gambling. I'm through with pornography. When the Spirit of God comes in, there's a change of life. And I think it's ridiculous when you say that after three years, you found the answer. Listen, I've been in this for 66 years. I've got 130,000 hours of study in the Bible. And I've written a book, Alcohol, the Beloved Enemy. And here's where the big problem is. There are 240 texts where the word wine is used, and it's wrong. And here's why. 135 times it should say grape juice, the fruit of the vine and only 105 times alcoholic booze. Now you have to depend on what the words yin, oinus, and tarash mean. And when it's joy, it's grape juice. When it's misery and heartache, it's booze that sends a man to eternal hell as we're going to see. And boy, you can't be pulling that stuff in your body and being a testimony to the world when the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.22, abstain from all appearance of evil. Mm, you know, Jack did an awful lot of research, just an awful lot. And uh, he's written a book that is very, very good to study. And here, here it is. Take a look at it, please. Alcohol, the beloved enemy. Hardly seems like it goes together, but it is. Now, Jack, here are some of the Hebrew and Greek scholars that you studied. Would you like to read them there, please? Yes. Dr. William Pettengill, Dr. R.A. Torrey, Dr. William Patton, Dr. Robert Teachout, Mr. M. Stewart, Dr. F. Lewis, Dr. F. R. Lee, and Dr. Murphy, professor of Hebrew in Belfast, Ireland. Now, let me tell you some of the things they've said. Let's look at Leviticus 10, verses 9 and 10. Do not drink wine or strong drink. Thou nor thy sons with thee when you go into the tabernacle of the congregation, God's house. Why? That you may put difference between holy and unholy, clean and unclean. Now that should settle it for every Christian. Where are they? God's house. And you don't mix the holy with the unholy and the clean with the unclean. What is holy and clean? God's house. What is unholy and unclean? The booze. I don't think I have to go any farther. 
God wants sanctified Christians. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3. He's calling that we be sanctified, set apart for the Lord. And 1 Peter 1, 16 says, Be ye holy, for I'm holy. 1 Thessalonians 4, 7. God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Did you get it? He didn't call us unto uncleanness. That which defiles the temple of God. The holy and the clean is the house of God. Unholy and unclean. The booze. Here he says we haven't been called unto uncleanness. Using booze. And then whole, follow peace with all men and holiness. Without which no man shall see the Lord. Hebrews 12, 14. Now here's a real problem. They weren't supposed to use booze when they went into God's house. And now we've got it in our churches as you're going to see later. But God dwells not in temples made with hands, Acts 17, 24. Where does he dwell now? 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Our bodies have become the temples of the Holy Ghost. And we are to keep them clean for the Lord. And he says, you're bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are Christ's. These bodies ought to be kept clean because this is where the Holy Spirit of God lives. And we can grieve the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 4, verse 30. Be ye holy for I'm holy. And that is the church of Jesus Christ. That's what it always was. But then these crowds started coming like my parents from foreign countries where they do believe in drinking. And Christianity, which didn't see any of this for a number of years, started to backslide just in the last few years. Everything goes now. You can go to the churches and you have lattes, but now they're bringing in the booze and you can have your rock bands and you can come in little skimpy clothes half naked. There are no more standards. Be a holy for I'm holy. Let's go on, honey. Mm, yes, we're going to be going on here. I'd like you to take a look at uh, somebody who is imbibing here. Bless this beer. Twelve local Episcopal priests Toast Lancaster Brood Church Ale. Whoa. And then some church folk ask, what would Jesus brew? Ah, oh, breaks my heart. And then churches take their message to taverns, and they're saying, well, right here we can uh, give uh, the message and uh, enjoy your booze. Well, here's a bar called Floribama. Florida Bar mixes Bibles and booze, and I can't believe what this next article says. If Jesus returned to earth, he'd probably kick back at the Florida Bama, said Jack de Jeanette, a founding pastor of the church. Now, that church is in a bar. We have so many people in from out of town. We have people come in, and when they see we are having church, they pick up a Bloody Mary, a bushwhacker, or a soft drink. Sit down and listen to the sermon. It's really cool. You know, it's unique. If Jesus returned to earth, he would go to a bar to enjoy that liquor. I'm sorry. That breaks my heart. That's not what the Word of God says. I'm going to ask Jack, should liquor be served in a church? The psalmist said, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. You don't get in a bar with a bottle of whiskey in your mouth. Now, let's get into some real Bible texts, all right? These are the verses I used to use when thousands came to quit booze. Proverbs 20, verse 1. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Proverbs 23, 20, be not among wine bibbers. I've got 12,000 volumes at home. I've never been able to find it in any of the Christian writings, but I found it in Webster's Dictionary. Listen to the definition of a wine bibber. One who drinks alcohol on a regular basis. Social drinking. What about it? Be not with them. I think that's pretty plain. And the Holy Spirit wrote these texts. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. 1 Peter 1, 21. How about 23, verse 31? Look not on the wine when it's red and when it moves, fermentation, but you may look on it which in the juice stage, but when it becomes red and moves, don't look at it. That's a command from God. Now, I don't know where all your scholars got all their interpretations of these kind of texts. It's so plain. 
Habakkuk 2.15, Woe, judgment unto him that gives his neighbor drink and puts the bottle to him and makes him drunk. Hmm. No, these bodies are vessels and temples for the Holy Ghost. We ought to keep them clean. Now, I like 1 Corinthians 8.13. The Apostle Paul said, you know what? We have people offering sacrifices in pagan temples. Then they sell the meat for discount prices. And some Christians are buying that meat. He says, now there's nothing really wrong with it. But they get it, because they get it so much cheaper, they purchase it there. And he says, what will I say about it? All right, listen. If meat makes my brother to offend, I will eat no meat while the world stands. Praise the Lord for that kind of a testimony. If booze makes your brother to offend, don't touch it. The rescue missions of America are trying to get these derelicts out of the trouble they're in with booze. But now, like in Moody, you've got one of the greatest missions in the world right there near the school. And they're trying to help these men get rid of this filthy liquor that dooms souls and sends men to hell. But they say, well, Moody's doing it now. All the teachers are doing it. What a mess. What a shame. And all you other colleges. Can't we be real Christians today, born again, new creations in Christ Jesus, raised to newness of life, changed? I'll tell you, if you're not different, you are not real because Christ, when he comes in, makes a difference. You know, Jack, so many people are having that problem right now. In fact, uh, a lady who was drunk just recently ran into my niece and killed her. So many people, she didn't intend to do that, but she let alcohol control her life. How sad to think that alcohol can ruin your life, but I know someone who can help you overcome it. Put it aside. You don't have to be that way. The Lord will help you to have a new life. We'll talk about it in just a moment. But our last week, friends, for this wonderful offer, it is Jack's Prophecy Bible. Last week, last week. So take a look, please, at the commercial. Presenting the third edition of the Jack Vanopee Prophecy Bible, this beautiful burgundy leather-bound edition has been created exclusively for the friends of Jack Vanopee Ministries. Dr. Vanopee has highlighted all 10,385 prophetic verses and coded each passage in the margins so you'll know at a glance the event to which the prophecy refers. The Jack Vanopee Prophecy Bible King James Version features the words of Christ in red and includes the program Dr. Vanopee used to categorize and memorize over 15,000 verses of Scripture. Also contained in the pages of this outstanding third edition are three books by Dr. Vanapi, Your Future, an A to Z Index to Prophecy, Revelation Revealed, Verse by Verse, and Daniel Final End Time Mysteries Unsealed, also verse by verse. This special Bible would make a great gift for any occasion. For any occasion. Well, you know, Christmas is over. We're already into the new year. And I trust that you will realize what a great gift this would be for a wedding, anniversary, or birthday. Wonderful. And with your order, I'll be sending you my gift to you, Soul Food, the devotional that meant so much to my heart this year. So there's the 800 number. There's the address last week. So please make the call immediately. We'll get this into the mail as soon as we hear from you. Jack Renippi Prophecy Bible. You know, it's so important to be reading the Bible today and to absorbing it in our hearts and talking about prophecy. So please make the call. There's the 800 number and there's the address. And as I say, my gift to you for the new year. It will bless your heart, I promise. I referred a moment ago to the dark side of drinking alcohol. Someone else has referred to that, and I'm going to go on here with the headlines. Experience the sinister side of bourbon. Now, they weren't putting it down with this article, but this next all article really hurt my heart. Lonely, painful road of drugs and alcohol. Did you know the number one drug in America is alcohol? Thomas Kincaid, what an artist he was. And he had a relapse with alcohol that probably contributed 
to the end of his life at age 54. What an artist. Lost everything. Yes, he did. And here you see it. Quenching the spirits. How faith-based rehab programs are doing the battle with Russia's drinking problem. Now, Russia has a huge problem over there. Seven million. It, it's alcoholics. It, yes, it's national, Jack. Counting their losses, and there you see it right there. It says seven million estimated alcoholics in Russia. How sad. Church-based alcohol rehab in Russia and Ukraine constitutes perhaps the most ambitious social outreach undertaken by Christians since 1991. Now, you know, uh, our brother there, Ben Stein, referred to the pain that alcohol can bring. Jack, will you open up a little more to our knowledge about what the Bible has to say about alcohol? In 1 Corinthians 11, 21, the Christians had a communion service and they used a fermented beverage and they all got drunk and Paul was so disgusted. In the discussing it, he said in 1 Corinthians 5, verse 11, I've written unto you, if any man that's a brother be a fornicator or covetous, idolater or railer or drunkard or extortioners, don't even eat with him until he repents. Amen. Now, what's the final outcome of all this? In 1 Corinthians 6, verses 9 and 10, he says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you got washed and you got rid of your booze then. How about it, all you guys in your Christian colleges? Galatians 5, 19 to 21, it mentions 17 sins. Number six is witchcraft, which is drugs. And number 16 is alcohol. He says, of the which I tell you for, I'm going to tell you once again, they which do such things shall not, shall not, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You think you can be a testimony drinking that rotten booze? When men will go to hell and the missions are crying out for help and you're ruining your testimony in front of them, they say, if the Christian... Teachers can do it. Why can't we do it? If the preachers can do it, why can't we do it? And they'll never have victory, even Alcohol Anonymous. You guys are not the soul of the earth and not the light of the world. And Rexella, we're going to read some things here, what others have said. Let's get into it right now as we conclude right. this. Well, put it on the screen right now because I'd like for you to read it with me, if you will, please. Historian Sir Arnold Toynbee has identified alcohol as a major force in the destruction of 19 civilizations preceding our own, and evidence of alcohol's destructiveness is all around us. Nevertheless, our love affair with this enemy continues in Shakespeare. Oh, that man should put an enemy into their mouths to steal away their brains. Oh, God, should we with joy, pleasure, revel, and applause transform ourselves into beasts? Thomas Edison said, I do not drink alcoholic liquors. I have better used for my head to put alcohol in the human brain. It's like putting sand in the bearings of an engine. And Jack, would you read this next Joseph one, Cease, an outstanding Lutheran theologian of the 19th century, gives the following commentary. Listen carefully. The history of strong drink is the history of ruin, of tears, of blood. It is perhaps the greatest curse that has ever scourged the earth. It is one of depravity's worst fruits, a giant demon of destruction it is an evil which is limited to no age, no continent, no nation, no party, no sex, no period of life. It has taken the poor man at his toil and the rich man at his desk, the senator in the halls of state and the deliverer man on the street, the young man in his festivities and the old man in his repose, the priest at the altar and the layman in the pew, and plunge them together into a common ruin. And God use this message to speak to your hearts and all you guys get down in your faces before God and get right. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. America's in trouble. The world's in trouble. Judgment's coming. And if you guys don't repent of what you're doing, you're going to be responsible for a lot of it. Lord Jesus, send a Holy Ghost revival. 
Use me to help start, Lord. Oh, Jack, how good that is. And how good it is to know that we can be delivered from anything in our lives. We had so many things we were going to deal with today. But, you know, Jack has this alcohol in his heart, and he wanted to share it with you. But perhaps you're in illicit sex or some other kind of drug. Whatever it is, the Lord will deliver you if you'll open your heart to him. Will you please pray that prayer? Say, Lord, I believe you're the Savior of the world, and I accept you as my Savior. Pray with Jack right now, will you? Are you sick of that alcohol? Are you sick of that marijuana, heroin? It's ruining your life, and you can have joy in the Lord. He says, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. You don't need that for a lift. You've got the Holy Spirit, and you can get Jesus in the Holy Spirit right now. Look at me and pray this, Lord Jesus. I'm tired of the way I've been living. I've heard a message of hope today. I receive you as my Savior. Cleanse me, Lord. And like you did to the Vanity family, you removed the booze out of their lives. And now they've been in the ministry, and two and a half million have been saved through them. Now pray this, Lord Jesus, come into my heart now. Save me. Cleanse me. And let me be with you forever. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I trust that you prayed that prayer. Did you just say, Lord, be my Savior? If you did, he came in. He is your Savior. And if you will, please write me and let me know that you accepted the Lord. I'll send you this little booklet for steps in a new direction. Hey, there's my address. Please write me. I'd love to hear from you in this new year. And now, whoo, the last week for this wonderful offer, and I'll be giving you this gift with it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order the Prophecy Bible. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Last week, back to Rexella. Thank you, Chuck. Now, there's my telephone number, please, the 800 number, and there's the address. So please write to me or call, and we'll get this in the mail as soon as we hear from you. Like Chuck said, last week. So make the call right now, and I'll be giving you this wonderful devotional book. So please, I'd love to hear from you in this new year. By the way, Happy New Year. You'll have a lot happier if you read this book. I just want to say, friends, that you know, Christians must live in the world. Think about it. But not let the world live in them. Jack's been talking about that today. We have to be here, but we don't have to let everything that's here live in us. How good to have the Lord in our lives. We're going to look forward to being in your home again next week, friends. And until then, will you remember all through this new year, that God truly cares for you, and so do we, so very, very much. We'll look forward to being with you again. Bye-bye.